let's go into this. Well, Dito is the time we have. Creation versus evolution. Remember, we are still looking at worship. And under this, this worship, we shall look at the different ways of worship. Now we are going back to see creation versus evolution. So the Jews have creation. The Samaritans have evolution. So let's look at where these things land us. In Genesis, the word itself, some have said it is genes, is. So if you want to define genes, you have to go to the genes, the genealogy of things and see how they come into existence. So what are the genes is, as you're going to look at them? John chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In fact, when you go to the Greek translation, taking it literally or direct speech, it will be, in original was the saying, and the saying was toward the God, and God was the saying. So in other words, God himself was the saying. Now, when you go to Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So we have the, the original, but again, we have again another beginning when God is creating the heavens and the earth. And as we, we go along, we shall see what heaven and earth represent in Genesis. Not as everywhere it is used. Here, it has special meaning in Genesis. So in the Hebrew uh, translation, it says, directly translated, in beginning, he created Elohim, created the heaven and the earth. And the earth, she became chaos and vacancy and darkness over surfaces of abyss. And the spirit of Elohim vibrating over the surfaces of the waters. So it tells us that, in fact, here in the Hebrew, it is singular heaven and earth. And the earth was chaotic. So there was chaos. That already tells us that already someone with chaos was upon, was in this place and was dark and over surface, darkness was over surfaces of abyss, and the very word abyss is the very word used in the New Testament as the bottomless pit. So let's look at the creation story. Genesis 1 3. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day. So the, here there was a division of light from the darkness. Doesn't this sound like when something is divided, that means they will never be together. Doesn't this tell you that there is a war between light and darkness? As we shall see. So already the division tells you, as you see how he will divide the goats and the sheep, there is a division of this and this. And there was a division among them. Always this move this way and this move this way. There would never be a communion of the two. And God called the light darkness. No. And God called the light day. So the light he called day. And the darkness he called night. So in other words, God calls the the, the light, day, capital. And the darkness, he called night. And there you see the understanding of two things. 
there we have the light and we have the night. So we have the light and the night being darkness. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So in other words, it, it shows you here that there was uh, light is called day, the darkness is called night, then evening and morning. Question, of the two, which was there first? Of course it is the darkness. Darkness was there, then light came. Then that means that according to this, light is day, darkness is night. And evening is night, and morning is the day. As you can notice, the evening... Even, which means dusk or dark. So evening is a verb which can be darking or dusking. And morn means light. So morning is lighting. So every time you have morning, we're talking about light or day. So every, all the period where there is light is called morning or lighting that is what it says so all together the light and the darkness is a day because the bible tells us and the morning and the evening and the morning were the first day so evening and morning is first day so each of these has its period in other words the darkness and the light are separated. So the light will move from darkness to light, then light to, to darkness. That is each of them we can recall 12 hours. And Jesus said, and there are 12 hours in a day, in a light. If a man walketh in the day, he stumbleth not. But if he walketh in the darkness, he stumbleth. So here is the darkness and the day in in the Hebrew understanding. So the, if we take it the, the sinusoidal way, the, there would be a darkness to light, then light to darkness, which is the evening and the morning. So the darkness to light, then light to darkness, which is the 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 evening and the morning the evening and the morning that is the way it is written so that is a day this is the same understanding whether here or here you'll have the same now the bible tells us that the day would begin with the darkness because it says and the evening and the morning so the day would begin with the darking, the evening, and the morning, the lighting. And once you get there, then which is the evening and the morning. So that means the day must begin with the evening and will end with the light. Which represents that darkness can come and start, but it will never win. Always light will win. In other words, darkness will come and rain, but light will come and rain and win. So, but if you go to today's understanding, you will see that what is the transition? Midnight is a transition time period from one day to the next. The moment when the day changes, which is in ancient Roman timekeeping. Midnight was halfway between the sunset and sunrise, varying according to the seasons. So the current timing of, 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 of days where the day begins is always comes from Rome, ancient Roman timekeeping. So in other words, when we talk about midnight, is the transition period from one day to the next. According to Roman, not according to Hebrew. According to the Hebrews, it was from evening to morning. So from evening to morning, from evening to morning. 
Solar midnight is a time period of solar noon when the sun is closest to Nadil and the night is equidistant from dusk at dawn. So here they will show you that midnight marks the beginning and ending of each day in civil time throughout the world. Question, which is the civil time now? Is the civil time the Hebrew or the Roman? Clearly you will see that the Roman has become the civil. So the, the whole world is bowing before a system that is Roman, but not that is Hebrew. Remember in our series that Jesus told the, the woman of Samaria that you worship what you know not what, but you worship what we know for salvation is of the Jews. So you have to go to the Jews and ask them, excuse me, when does the day begin? Jesus, when does the day begin? And they will tell you the day begins from sun from sunset then to sunset. But for these ones, it is from night to midnight, from midnight to midnight. Okay, now what is the essence of this? If the day begins at midnight, then that means darkness is here. Then the day would begin around here when darkness is raining and then we'll move some dark, then light comes and rules, and then darkness will end the day. According to our calendar here, or the time of the Hebrews, the day will begin at, at, in the, at sunset and moves darkness 12 hours, and then light comes 12 hours. But here, you will see that the day will begin six hours in, in the darkness, then the light comes 12 hours, and the darkness ends the day. In other words, the day ends in darkness, and it begins in darkness. What does that mean? Does that mean darkness will win? If the, 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 the sides of the day are marked by darkness, that means light will all be overcome in the middle and will be one. So this is the ancient Roman understanding of the calendar, or the, the time, and the Bible will all, the Bible tells us that this system will think to change times and laws. And here is the times changed from, from, from sunset to sunset. It is now from half dark to half dark. Straight. And this is serious. Why? It shows that darkness will win. And this is a very dangerous position to take. John chapter 3 verse 19, Jesus says, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. So in other words, every time darkness is given the, the time to end the day, that means people have desired more of darkness than light. Light should it end the day. Let darkness end it and that it is because their deeds are evil. So that is not me saying it. It is Jesus saying that that is what happens. So already the times, the set times of God from, from sun, sunrise, su sunset to sunset have been changed from darkness to darkness. There is light will be overshadowed in the middle there. And that is Genesis 1 up to verse 5. Let's push on. Genesis chapter 1 verse 6. And a God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. So you see here there will be waters from the waters. So the firmament is atmosphere, which means there was no atmosphere, and there's going to be a division to divide the waters from the waters. Now, which waters were divided up aside 
or up and down. What does this mean? You see? Well, there we see the, the, the firmament. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. So according to Genesis, there are waters above and waters below. So what are these waters above and waters below? Let's have a look at them. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So when the Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven, it's talking about God created the firmament. And the evening and the morning were the second day. So according to the Bible, the firmament is called the space. And the firmament is called the heaven. And, and God said, let the waters under the firmament be gathered together at one place. So we have waters under the firmament and waters above the firmament. Now, does, does science teach any of that? That there are, there are waters up there? No. They will tell you that uh, there's an ozone layer and there's nothing up there. Yet the Bible says, above are waters. Different. But remember, this is all, it's a deep, the, the, civil, the civil way is that it comes from Rome, ancient Rome, it doesn't come from the Jews. So the Jews have their own way of understanding creation, and the Samaritans, which are the Romans, have their own way of understanding creation. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. So God called the, the gathering of the waters uh, the, and the, the, when the dry land appeared, God called the dry land earth. So when we talk about God called the heaven and the earth, we're talking about the firmament and the dry land, and the gathering together of the waters called he sees. So that's why it says, worship him who made the heavens and the earth and the fountains of the waters, which are the seas. And God saw that it was good. Okay. So the dry land is called earth, and the gathering of the waters is called seas. Okay. Let's go on. And, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Listen carefully. The seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. So in other words, if there were mangoes, the mangoes are fruits, but the seed should be in itself after his kind. So in other words, if there were mangoes, and you have very other different types of mangoes, for example, where I come from in Buganda, we have very many types of mangoes, but each of them is in itself. There is nothing like putting them together. Each of them came in its kind, itself and his own kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So if on the first day, God created the light and the, he divided the light, and, and the evening and the morning were changed. Now it is from darkness to darkness. The, the, there is a war there. Already the devil is fighting that. Again, we have another one when he says uh, he, he made the firmament and divided the waters from the waters. Already that one is no longer thought that above there are the waters. 
because we see that they tell us that rockets go through, uh, they go up there and cross. So if there were uh, waters above and waters below, how come the waters below are liquid, yet up there, there are no waters according to science? This is a war still against what the, the teaching of the Jews is. And so we, we can see here that even on the third day, when the fruits are brought, the, the, the ground is made and fruits come, still there will be a war that there will be a need to put these fruits in different kinds, bringing, to, bringing them together. And this system is called grafting. So if you graft, then what is seed in itself? Then what is So what is God's, what is after his kind? There's no kind now. You will find that this one resembles this and this one resembles this. And then you get, you get uh, 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 two avocado seeds of not in, it, not in themselves and then you put them together. Then whatever comes out is no longer in itself. That one is hard to understand. Crossing around really can bring a very big problem. Fruits and trees came in different kinds. It is only man who came in only one kind, as we are going to see that. And the evening and the morning were the, were the third day. So grass and fruits came on the same day. Now look at this today. They are no longer in the same kind. You get one tree, you cut, and then you put the, you mix them, and they will no longer be of their kind. And the result is that now, and in fact, someone drew this, that every time they have this, then this is from none other than from the devil himself. So there is already a war that has been waged on creation because the devil, if he can beat creation, then he can beat the entire, even uh, if he can beat creation, then even revelation is a problem. The ends will be a problem. Now let's look at this. So day one, we have light. Day two, we have firmament and death three we have sea land plus plants in other words god in the first three days he came creating spaces there's a space for the light day two space which is firmament there's nothing death three sea land and plants there's nothing inhabiting everything is 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 there now therefore Genesis 114, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and, the, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Look at this. The lights are brought on the fourth day. So there was a space for light. Now there are lights. And these lights are to rule, to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years so how are we supposed to know the days and years and the seasons and signs it is from the sun and the moon is that still today possible no people have changed everything we are now supposed to listen to what people tell us we're supposed to look at watches and, and clocks and other things, but not what God said. Still the war rages. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven. Question, where were they put? In the firmament of the heaven, which is the space. Which space is between the waters? So the lights, according to Genesis, were put between the waters 
the lights were put in the firmament, which firmament is the space between the waters above and the waters below. So to give light upon the earth, and the earth there is not the whole thing, but the ground, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So, so this is what it is. And God set them where? In the visible arc of the sky to give light upon the earth, which is the ground, the dry land, and to rule every over the day. Now, in order to understand this earth, if you go back a little here, it will tell you that God said here, let the earth bring forth, the earth brought forth, which is earth now. Is it the entire thing? No, the ground. So even here, when we talk about the earth, we, we, we're talking about the ground and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So on the fourth day, lights. First day, the space of light. Fourth day, the lights come. Now, what does the world believe today? According to Genesis, the lights uh, were put in the firmament inside the space, the space which is inside the waters, in the midst of the water. So there are waters above and the waters below, and they put the lights in there. So according to Genesis, the sun and the moon are inside the earth. But here, the earth, is outside and the sun and the moon are all outside the earth. This is a fascinating story. So still, this is Roman reckoning, secular, or as we call the civil, it is Roman reckoning. And if you look at all of these, these are, are Roman gods, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, Mars, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, all of these were names of their gods. And they are the ones, and all of them are moving around the sun. In other words, they are worshiping the sun. So let's look at the origin of the solar system as they state it. Here is a belief outline of the current theory of the events in the early solar of the solar system. A cloud of interstellar gas or dust, which is solar nebula, is disturbed and collapses under its own gravity. The disturbance could be, for example, the shock wave from a nearby supernova. And the cloud collapses, it heats up and compresses in the center. It heats enough for the dust to vaporize. The initial collapse is supposed, sup, supposed to take less than 100,000 years. So this, we're not speaking about days here, these are years. And if you continue down here, they'll tell you eventually you'll have after 10 to 100 million years, you end up with 10 or so planets in stable orbits, and that's a solar system. These planets, their surfaces may be heavily modified by last big collision they experience. So they will tell you how each of them came into existence. And it has nothing to do with creation, the, the ball of gas exploding, and then you have all these things existing, and then they start to move around. Also note that the overall architecture of our solar system is orderly and, age, and the ages of its numbers uniform. All indicators point to a single formation event about 4.6 billion years ago. Okay, so 4.6 billion years ago. I wonder which year was Jesus born in the 4.6 billion years ago. He must have been uh, 2. Point something billion years ago. But the Bible doesn't tell us that. 
The above is not to ignore the fact that a great deal of evolution occurred in the solar system after it is formed. So they'll tell you how Venus came and the Mars and, and so on. So you end up with the sun in the middle and all of these planets are worshiping the sun. They are going around the sun, moving around the sun, moving around the sun, moving around the sun. All of them are going around the sun. So in other words, they will tell you that these, except for planet Saturn, they will show you it also has, but it again has its others. And there they will always show you that the sun is the center of worship. Isn't this sun worship? So even within the sun system of the solar system, sun, the sun is the center and all the others are worshiping it. Do we have a, a, a religion which has sun worship as its center? And even the day of the sun, and even the day of the sun becomes the center of worship as we are going on. So it is even embedded in the study and children grow up studying this because that's what they know. And again, the, the earth, the sun, is there even very big than the earth. Yet the Bible tells us the earth was without form. And inside there, God said, let there be a firmament. In the midst, he created the firmament. In the earth, inside. But these ones say, no, excuse me, for us, we want this. And it is the sun that gives energy. The sun God should be the one worshipped. And in 1582 October, Pope Gregory the 13th changed the calendar from Julius Caesar's calendar to make it rhyme with the sun. This was, the other one was the, the, the lunar calendar. He made it to move with the solar calendar and now the, uh, everything rhymed was started driving with the sun. And from 1582, he removed 15, almost 11 days. The fourth, the next was 15, and the calendar was changed to Gregorian calendar, which is the one we're having today. So and still the calendar is, this, is a secular one from, okay. Then we continue. Let's see that what the Vatican says about this. At Castel Gandolfo, you can see many domes. There's the big dome of the church right in the central square, the Church of San Tommaso. Right next to it, on top of the Pope's modest vacation home, there are two domes for telescopes, and they're all right there visible in Castel Gandolfo. We would like to think, it's our fantasy, our way of thinking, if you will, that prayer, that worship of God, is happening under all of these domes. When people come here to visit, they're often surprised and even a little shocked to find out the Vatican has its own astronomical observatory. And it takes some explaining. Uh, is this some kind of big exception? This kind of a question. It's like, we'd say, well, no, this is the only Vatican institution that does research, but the Catholic Church has and does, has supported and does support science for centuries, thank you. In some sense, much of science was born out of the heart of the Church. Pope John Paul II and popes before him, way back to St. Augustine, talked about the search for truth being in the two books, the book of scripture and the book of nature. And you can read each of those books and each one requires its particular skill, but the fundamental faith, we could say the faith in the unity of truth is that even if it seems to us those two books, science and faith, have some tension, disagree with each other, in the end, our faith is that the truth is one. They cannot disagree because God is the author of both books. Okay. So, science 
uh, has now been called nature. Okay, so nature is now the, the other book, but now it's no longer nature, it's science. Because we have read nature according to Genesis, it's different from what science teaches. So this has become now the new way of doing things. And remember that the Vatican created secret societies that could help them bring down all this. And if you look at Freemasonry, is one of the secret societies which was founded upon by, of course, priests. Uh, you, you, you'll find that uh, the all Masons are the ones in space. You are either Mason or a Mormon to be in space. No, none has ever been in space except if you were a Mormon or a Freemason. And there is the Scottish Rite Supreme Council. Northern Masonic Jurisdiction, United States, Millennium 2000. And there you see the men that have been there. And here, Freemasons in space, they will tell you that Freemasons have always been in the forefront of the scientific community from the founding of British Royal Society of today to today's NASA program in the United States. So the entire NASA and the entire community of, of space is governed by them. So if Freemasonry is an occult society, and it is, and, and again, it was founded by the same people, the Rome, and, and, and allowed to work, that tells you that the philosophy they have must have come from Rome itself. So there we see the administration, uh, Kenneth S. James Edwin Webb, who, uh, who was of this lodge, they will show you the lodge, and he was the administrator of NASA. Come to astronauts, uh, Buzz Audrey, there he is, Edwin E. Buzz Audrey, uh, January 20th, 1930. He, these are the men that went to the moon, as they claim, and they were all lodge members, they were all Masons of the highest level. And they, will they show you the scientists, all of them, everything in space is theirs. And if you look at the, the, the list of 33 degree Freemasons, you'll always find the scientists, the Masons, all of them, big men of the world. Yes, Arafat, Buzz Aldrin, Tony Blair, Reverend William Booth, Sir Richard Barton, George Herbert Walker Bush, Walt Disney, Alistair Crowley, this Clinton, Sir Winston Churchill, the men that have run politics, even Algo is there. And this is the man in charge of environment now. We have Reverend Billy Graham, we have James Graham, uh, Manly P. Hall, J. D. Gahuva, uh, Reverend Des Brigham Young, the founder of Jehovah of the one of the founders of the Jehovah Witness, Henry Kissinger, they will show you very many, Benjamin Netanyahu, General Colin L. Powell, who, has, who, recent, who died recently before COVID. Then you have others like Ronald Reagan, President of the United States, Frederick Roosevelt. And it's interesting, even you find Saddam Hussein was a high free nation as is shown. And Freemasons and NASA, you cannot differentiate them. They are all one. There is Neil Armstrong, a, a high Freemason. That means whatever we see in the space, whether drawing the, 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 the sun and the whatever rotating around the sun, this could be even architecturally designed in order for people to believe that really the sun is moving the earth is moving around the sun. And remember, before 1582, there was nothing like the sun rotates. And that theory was brought by none other than a, 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 a monk who was, a, who was a, a, a one from the monastery, a man by the name of Galileo Galilei. And he was a trained monk. So that means he was also a Catholic. 
he brought a theory that the earth is moving around the sun. And everyone, people, people who are raging and raging and raging. And remember, in the, in the occult, the only way to promote something is to fight it. So what if you bring a theory, then you try to fight against it, then later you, by fighting it, people start reading it, and then later you acknowledge it and promote it. So the, the best way to fight against, to promote something is to fight against it. So the church arrested Galileo Galilee, and then later they picked up the theory, and now the whole world believes the same thing. And even the calendar was changed to, to move in line with the solar system. So let's look at this video, Faith Meets Science, as the Vatican tells us. Mary Shovlin tours the Vatican's world-class observatory, now run by a Jesuit scholar. The hillside town of Castel Gondolfo, just outside Rome, is home to a place for papal retreats, but many don't realize that it's also home to the Vatican's observatory. Pius XI established it here in the 1930s, entrusting it to the Jesuits. Brother Guy Consolmagno is a native of Detroit, Michigan, with a degree from MIT. Pope Francis named him director of the observatory last September. This is where science and faith hit the road. You've got somebody here who's got an MIT ring and a collar. Uh, I love wearing both of them together because it shocks people out of the idea that somehow science and religion are opposed. They're not opposed. I was just selling you something. There are over 22,000 books here, including works by Copernicus and Galileo. They have one of the world's best collections of meteorites providing information about the early history of our solar system. We have people working in galaxies, people taking spectra of stars. We've got a telescope in Arizona that's wonderfully equipped for measuring photometry and spectra. We've got also the ability to do history of science. The vast array of research has earned worldwide attention. Adorning the walls here are signatures of popes that have visited, as well as famous astronauts, men who have been to the heavens, and men who tell us how to get to heaven. Scripture tells me God created... Telling the world about the importance of planetary science, Brother Consul Magno received the Carl Sagan Medal in 2014. He blogs, he tweets, and talked to me about the joy and awe he experiences through his work. I realize it's the little kick that I get from the creator who's saying, pretty good stuff, huh? Pretty amazing stuff, huh? And guess what? You're a part of it, because you too are a part of this universe that God so loved that he became a part of it himself. In Rome, Mary Shovlin, EWTN News Nightly. Part of the universe and part of the universal church. Oh, I love that. God became part of the universe and he became part of the universal church. I love that last statement. And the entire observatory is run by the Jesuits. Interesting. So the Jesuits run the entire observatory. So if the Jesuits who are promoting the futuristic agenda and they're against creation to, and they're the ones that are counter reforming, then whatever they could be promoting cannot be in line with what the Bible says. Point blank. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly, let the moving creatures that hath life. And fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heavens. And God created great wells, and every little waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be, be fruitful and multiply, and, full, and fill the waters in the sea, and let the fowl multiply in the air. And, every, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So the fifth day, the God brings, he fills the spaces, the firmament, and the waters which are created. 
So second day and fifth day are the same. The firmament is created, but here they fill the firmament and the waters that are there. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures. So they're talking about the earth, the ground, the land. After his kind, cattle and creeping thing and the beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after his kind. So each of these cattle was after his kind. And everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. So each creeping one, there you see them were created by God. And God saw that it was good. All the land animals, all of them came in the same. Look at these beautiful creatures. Look at these, these ones, all of them, God created them, whether snakes, whether rats, whether these, all of them beautiful in their own way. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So there comes man. And is, for him he comes alone in his own image. He doesn't, there were not many kinds of man, it is only one. So there, there will be nothing like these are other species of man, no, only one. Out of this one will become many, will become many. Even the cows, throughout the centuries, the cows have been in the same. Even the mangoes and everything have been coming, the giraffes and everything. But here man comes in his own kind. There's no other like him, but created in the image of God. Why? What is the image? The ability to rule, the ability to bring forth life, children, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the ground. So man came in a special way to have dominion, to, to represent God, this dominion, as he rules the entire universe. He shared this little thing with man. So therefore, light, sun, moon, stars, the five, water animals and birds, and the six animals and man. That is basically the summary. So day one and day four, light and bodies of light, day two, day five, firmament and feeding the firmament, day three and day six, earth with food, filling the earth. That is the sequence of creation. Now, Genesis 1.29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. Every tree, And every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And every time you see meat, it means food. So God point so all everything around. He had finished creating all the animals, everything, but pointed to man only the fruits, you the, the harm bearing seed, and the fruit of every tree in which is the the yielding seed, that should be man's food. So God knew very well what man needs and never pointed to the birds, neither the fish, neither the animals, but pointed to the fruits, because that is what he thinks is better for man. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, 
Where Rinda is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So according to, to Genesis, all animals, all animals, insects, everything upon the earth, their diet was not naturally vegan. Everything else is not, according to Genesis. Today they will tell us that the lion is a carnivore. It was made to eat flesh. Where do you read that? The, 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 the mosquito is designed to suck blood. Where do you read that? Or everything that was made, everything was given to eat the green herb for meat, and man was given the fruits. So that tells you that from the beginning, the, the God's design for man was to eat only and only the, the things that grow from the ground. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. So there were three trees here. One tree that is pleasant to the eyes. Those are the flowers, the beautiful flowers. They, they, they are pleasant to the sight and good for food. Then you have trees that are good for food. Which and, and here there is a colon, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden for food, and comma, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So these are the ones that God put there. And God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God's design for man's diet was nothing else that, other than the, the, the plants. That is what man was supposed to eat. So God created the man, the woman, and, the, and all the animals and gave them the same diet. But the difference is here that man was given the fruits and the herb. Yet the animals are given only the herb of the field. And all of this happens in the sixth day. Okay, let's go. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and rested Shabbat. On the seventh day, from all his work, which he had made. And there, the word Shabbat, is in the English Hebrew dictionary. So we find it is primitive root to repose, to desist from exertion, used in many applications, to cease, to be content, to leave, put away, to rest, to read, still, take away, put, put away, put down, stop. So in other words, God ceased his work and he rested. That means the Sabbath is part of creation. So refusing the Sabbath is going against creation. And he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the son of man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So if the Sabbath was made for man, that means that God made the Sabbath for man to for his benefit. And even he made the plants for man and there was the work for the plants. He made also the, 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 the family and it had an importance. Now, if the Sabbath was made for man, does man eat the Sabbath? No, but he, he must keep it. So if also the everything, even the plants and everything was made for man and God never said eat them, then man cannot do with the plants what God never gave him to do with, to do with them. Yeah. 
So the man cannot do some things. There are some things man cannot do with the plants, even if they were given to him or the animals. So man was given the following, the diet, the marriage, and the Sabbath. These three were given to him. This, the plants were his diet, but the animals were not. God gave him marriage and gave him a woman, but never told him to marry the animals, though they were there. He gave him the Sabbath, the seventh day to rest, but never gave him the sixth or the third. So God was specific on what he gave man to, for and for what use. So in other words, if, if, if this is the whole package, the commandments, to eat, to marry, and the Sabbath. So if you keep some of these, do you believe in the entire creation? So if you keep the Eden marriage, and you keep the Eden sub and you keep the Eden Sabbath. If you don't keep the Eden diet, then do you believe in creation? You don't. So everyone who believes in the Eden Sabbath and the Eden marriage, but doesn't believe in the Eden diet, does not believe in creation because the creation package is full. If you believe in the Eden diet and you believe in the Eden marriage but don't believe in the Eden Sabbath, still you are not part of creation, you are an evolutionist. Because you believe part of evolution and part of creation. And we have very many people today who believe in evolution and creation together. So which one would you choose? These are two diverse. You cannot be a Jew and you keep, and you, and you, believe evolution you cannot be a samaritan and you believe creation all jews must believe creation and samaritans evolution what kind of jews today have both have both evolution some parts of evolution and some parts of creation if you believe in creation as god gave it in genesis it's literal the debt is literal, the marriage is literal, the Sabbath is literal, then why do you have to say, no, the debt is not part of creation? And we cannot go back to creation of the, of, of the debt of, of Genesis because that is hard. Then why do you go back to the marriage of, the, of, of Genesis? Why don't you marry as, as, as the, the heathens marry? Why don't you keep also the, the Sabbaths as they are? But if you believe all this, please be a creationist. Uh, Jews believe in creation. And that is what God expects every Jew to believe. Do you want to be a Jew? Please have the entire creation package, not some part of it. And, and you believe the day begins at midnight, yet you are a Jew. How many Jews do you have who believe in, in, the, in, the, in the, the beginning at midnight. And you find someone say, please, we are going to meet, uh, 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 we are going to welcome the Sabbath uh, 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 at, uh, uh, on a Friday night. And ask, excuse me, does Friday have a night which is on Sabbath? These are Jews who, who say this. No, they have a Samaritan mindset, but they are, they are standing among the Jews. Why do you want to eat according to the Samaritan style, the Roman, not the Jewish kind of eating, the Sabbath? Why do you marry one wife? If you marry one wife, then you are on the creation story, marriage, and you are on, this, on, the, on the creation Sabbath, then go as well for the entire package. What kind of inconsistency is found among all these people? Choose one, creation versus evolution. There's no mingling the two. There is no borrowing one from the other. Be consistent, be God's people, keep all of them together. Don't keep one and leave the other. Have the entire package. As we believe the Bible and the Bible only and the entire Bible, all of it, Without dropping some, why would you go for the creation, some part of creation? You would believe the Sabbath and you believe the marriage, but don't believe the dead. 
there is a lady who was asking me and saying, please stop speaking about diet and diet and diet. Please, look, we were given in, in the law of Moses to, to, to eat some things. Then I told her, if, even in, in the law of Moses, in the autonomy, we are also told to, to give a, a, a writing to these women if we don't like them. So is it okay when I give you also, if your husband gives you a writing when he's tired of you, because it is also found in the law of Moses? So they would like the Eden marriage, one man, one, one wife, but they don't want the Eden that. They would like the Eden Sabbath, the seventh, but they don't like the, the other one. It is all evolution. Once you pick one and don't follow some, it's like keeping nine commandments and you don't want one, which is, which is the Sabbath. It is still evolution. And that's why they fight against the Sabbath because they're evolutionists. So if you find the diet, you are an evolutionist. If you find that you fight the Sabbath, you are an evolutionist. If you fight the marriage, you are an evolutionist. Full stop. May God guide these people as we continue to ponder upon these words, such that we may know that as we worship, we are supposed to worship in spirit and in truth, as shall see in the next lectures. May God bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for leading us. It has been a hard time, many disturbances, a lot of obstacles, but your hand has been there in order for this lecture to get finished. You are the Lord of creation and the Lord of salvation. That's why I told us you are the God who brought us out of Egypt. And you, again, you are the God who saved us, who created us. Help us, Lord, to remember that creation and restoration are one and the same. The way you created us is the way you restore us. So if we fight creation, then how can we be saved? Help your people and help us to get back to the standard for praying in Jesus' name. Amen.